Convention on Women, Peace, and Democracy. It's increasingly recognized um, that women should and must play a critical role in negotiations, peace and reconciliations, and long-term political processes. There are opportunities for women to participate in transitions in every stage, and they should be seized from the very beginning in order to ensure uh, a democratic transition of power. NDI has been um, able to implement, increasingly, programs to support women in peace and reconciliation and long-term political processes. Recent programs include support to women uh, during the national dialogue process in Yemen, and I'm going to share a publication that has come out of that program you can take a look at. We've also uh, supported women from northern and southern Yemen to come together and identify common priorities that they can highlight um, in the national dialogue process. I have another handout. Um, We've also um, had programs bringing women together from Sudan and uh, South Sudan uh, to identify common priorities um, that they can advocate to regional bodies. And we've had programs in Mali starting with uh, the transition working with women that were elected to parliament so that their voices were included in decisions that would impact the transition reconciliation process. And we continue to work in Mali um, having just started working with women at the local level to ensure that they have a voice in ongoing transition processes. In Cote d'Ivoire, we started work um, in 2012 um, working with the national transition body there, which um, is called the Body Commission. So our former director, Susan Markham, uh, initially went out and met with members of the commission as well as female parliamentarians, um, or was able to get um, a copy of uh, the process and made some initial recommendations for how to integrate gender into that process. And then we brought women from civil society and some young men together, and they, for the first time, were able to hear from uh, the head of the Bonnie Commission and then identify priorities for women in the ongoing reconciliation process in Cote d'Ivoire. And I have a couple of exemplaires of a handout with the recommendations that came out of that process um, in French, oh, I'm sorry, um, that I'm going to share. And so we wanted to um, explore a little bit more today um, because we have two honored guests from Cote d'Ivoire this week. The reconciliation process, um, what's been going on, how is the process going, and how have women been involved or not involved? Um, and to move forward, I'll pass this on to Olivia now. Thank you, Caroline. Um, so as Caroline mentioned, as I recently implemented sorry, a program in Cote d'Ivoire to foster women's leadership on reconciliation processes. Uh, before I give you an overview of that program, I just wanted to step back and give you a sense of why we chose to implement this particular program. Formerly an anchor of stability in West Africa, Cote d'Ivoire is currently struggling to foster national and local reconciliation after violent conflict triggered by former President Bagbo's refusal to step down after losing the 2010 elections. While a Dialogue, Truth, and Reconciliation Commission, CDVR, was established in 2011, to promote and foster reconciliation, Ivorian women lack official avenues for structuring participation in reconciliation activities, particularly at the local level. Of 197 mayors, only 11 of them are women. However, as many of you know, research suggests that post-conflict reconstruction and governance have better chances of succeeding when women are involved. Moreover, unlike some of their male counterparts, many of the women mayors live in their own communities, which gives them a better uh, chance of fostering local reconciliation amongst their communities. So in an effort to elevate female voices in Cote d'Ivoire's reconciliation process, NDI implemented a program from September 2013 to May 2014 to strengthen women's leadership in reconciliation and support women-led reconciliation initiatives. NDI worked with all of the women mayors in Cote d'Ivoire throughout the program, but we provided specific technical targeted assistance to four of them. Um, in the north, in Sirisu and Fumbulu, and in the west, in Binwe and Luwali. And we chose those four communes because they were most heavily affected by conflict in 2010 and 2011. Also due to the proximity of the communes to each other, each other, sorry, so that they could support each other beyond the life of this program. I'm going to touch on very briefly some of the key initiatives implemented by the women throughout this program. In terms of the, the targeted technical assistance that we offered to the four women mayors, they were able to implement advisory council sessions with high-level local officials such as prefects, traditional and religious leaders, to discuss community reconciliation needs. 
Um, they also implemented listening sessions to, to discuss how their communities were impacted by the political crises and dialogue sessions to address targeted reconciliation needs. Beyond that, the women who received targeted technical assistance and those that, that, were, that we worked with throughout the program but didn't receive the targeted technical assistance also organized women and youth in their communities into large income generating activity associations. Now many of these men and women in their communities were already a part of these associations, but they were very much structured along ethnical, ethnic lines. So the women gathered them into larger groups to encourage dialogue and promote a sense of shared experiences. Um, they also created reconciliation community committees to resolve local disputes and held reconciliation days and supported events between opposing communities. Now these are just a few examples of the activities that they were able to implement throughout the program. Finally, I'd like to highlight some of the key results from our program. At the start of the program, we administered a baseline questionnaire to assess local citizens and leaders' perceptions of reconciliation processes in their communities and the role that the women mayors were playing in these processes. The questionnaire revealed that local, traditional, political, and religious leaders' perceptions of the women mayors in their communities were fairly poor. Now, these poor perceptions were maybe due to social cultural factors. For example, in Saraso, the traditional chief noted that women, that women mayors are seen as advisors, whereas the men are the ones who make the decisions. Beyond that, maybe the mayors were also perceived, or the women mayors were perceived as threats to local leaders' powers of influence. In comparison, at the end of the program, when we conducted the final questionnaire, there was a marked improvement in perception of the women mayors. Local leaders highlighted the women mayors convene in power and their attempts to address long-standing disputes and foster reconciliation in their communities. Citizens in all four communities also have a greater appreciation of the role that the women can play in reconciliation processes. When asked in, if women in their communes are involved in the management of conflicts or organization initiatives, nearly all respondents agree. Asked to identify women leaders engaged in, the, in these initiatives, respondents in each city listed their mayor, as well as presidents of women's associations and CSOs. Finally, the baseline questionnaire also reflected cynicism on reconciliation issues. However, at the end of the program, 91% of respondents stated that reconciliation issues no longer remain in their community. While only a segment of the population was interviewed in each commune for these baseline and final questionnaires, the surprisingly high percentage we think is an indication of the positive impact of the women mayors in their communities. So with that being said, while this particular program focused on providing technical assistance to local women leaders, as Caroline mentioned, and NDI recognizes the critical role that women in general can play in a country's transition process to include long-term political processes. Our two speakers today, Mahim Dao Gabala and Françoise Kojis Ufumu, are great examples of the role that Ivorian women are playing to advance gender equity in transitional institutions and processes. Mahim Dao Gabala is currently the president, president of the Coalition des Femmes Leaders de Côte d'Ivoire, a coalition of women leaders in Côte d'Ivoire, where she has coached and trained over 250 women to, pre to prepare them to run for office. Françoise Koji Soufoumou is the president of the International Association for Democracy in Africa and served as the Eastern Regional Representative and President of the Subcommittee on Gender for the Dialogue, Truth, and Reconciliation Commission, CDBR, in 2011. I'll pass it on to Françoise now. Merci. Je voudrais commencer par dire que nous exprimons tous nos compliments au NDI. D'abord parce que le NDI nous a invités pour participer à ce grand forum, à, ce, à cette rencontre, à ce sommet des leaders africains initié par le président Obama. Et c'était une belle, c'est une belle initiative qui nous a permis. So, Madame Françoise would like to thank you very much uh, for bringing her here today to NDI, and also for NDI for bringing both of our guests to the U.S. Africa Forum uh, Summit on CSOs, and which has been initiated by President Obama. Oui, 
c'est un forum très intéressant qui nous a permis l'échange d'expressions. Et c'est très enrichissant. Nous allons certainement en discuter à la fin de, de, de cette discussion-là qui porte sur la Côte d'Ivoire. Ensuite, je voudrais dire merci au NDI pour le partenariat qu'il entretient avec l'Association internationale pour la démocratie en Afrique, Haïti Afrique, depuis 1994. So uh, the forum, the, Af the Af Africa US Forum Summit and forum that the that Francois attended uh, was very interesting and also allowed Francois and the other members of CSOs who were in attendance to exchange their experiences. Uh, she would also like to thank NDI for its partnership since 1994 with. <laughs> réalisé avec le NDI en Abidjan la charte des partis politiques. C'est le NDI et AID Afrique. Ok. Uh, a partnership with uh, an organization called AI, AID Africa uh, for, to, for planning the electoral charter. Charter. Ok, thank you. Voilà. Et donc, enfin, je dis euh, merci au NDI pour le soutien au processus de réconciliation de Côte d'Ivoire. And thanks to NDI also for its support of the reconciliation process in Côte d'Ivoire. Et donc, euh, vous avez vu que c'est le NDI qui a donc soutenu les maires de Côte d'Ivoire dans le processus de réconciliation. And as we've seen, it, NDI has supported mayors in Côte d'Ivoire in the reconciliation process. Nous avons eu à participer à euh, toutes les rencontres qu'ils ont organisées euh, au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire dans, dans le cadre de la réconciliation avec les maires, les, les, comment on appelle ça, euh, dans la gouvernance locale avec les maires. Oui, ok, je, je she was participer. able to attend all of our events that uh, we held with the women mayors in Côte d'Ivoire. Voilà, donc le, le processus de réconciliation au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire fait suite à toutes les crises qui ont eu lieu depuis, euh, disons, les années 90 jusqu'en 2011. Reconcili Reconciliation en Côte d'Ivoire est venue après plusieurs années de crise, qui a commencé en 1990 et a continué jusqu'à 2011. Au début, euh, les femmes étaient véritablement éloignées de ce processus, en ce sens que tous les, toutes les missions qui ont été effectuées pour euh, les accords, accords euh, de Lomé, euh, Marcoussi, euh, Accra, etc., on ne voyait pratiquement pas de femmes. So women were not part of the reconciliation processes after each of these crises, uh, including the accords that were held in parce que les femmes n'étaient pas présidentes de partis politiques. Donc elles ne participaient pas aux tables de négociation. Et c'était donc en marge des sommets des, partis, des responsables de partis politiques que les femmes tenaient des réunions, faisaient des rencontres avec les les organisations, euh, notamment quand on était parti euh, à Marcoussi, nous, dans le cadre d'organisation de la société civile, nous étions à marge à Paris et nous informions les groupes sur euh, ce qui se passait au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire. So, at these reconciliation processes, Madame Françoise and her CSO groups were there on the sidelines to, to observe and also to inform their organizations. Donc c'est ainsi qu'en en en 2001, il y a eu euh, le Forum pour la Réconciliation Nationale. Et j'étais membre du directoire de ce forum-là. Ce forum 
à, de réconciliation allait travailler sur toutes les questions concernant euh, la Côte d'Ivoire et qui ont provoqué la crise. Mais il s'est prouvé que finalement, euh, le président d'antan, l'ancien président, n'avait pas mis en pratique ce qui avait été euh, euh, les résolutions de ce forum. So during the 2001 forum, the, the attendees, they were able to come up with a lot of solutions for the crisis, but the president did not implement them, which helped lead to the next crisis. Puis la Côte d'Ivoire a fait son petit bout de chemin. Il y a eu, après les élections de 2000 donc, il y a eu les élections de 2010, mais que, qui a été arrachée de haute lutte, parce que euh, les responsables de partis politiques euh, n'étaient pas tous d'accord, disons le parti au pouvoir n'était pas d'accord pour qu'il y ait des élections. En 2010. En 2010, après les élections, tout le monde sait ce que la crise a provoqué. Et c'est à la suite de ça que la commission Dialogue, Priorité et Réconciliation a été mise en place. So after the, after the crisis, that was when the commission of dialogue and truth, truth reconciliation and dialogue that Madame Francois is part of was begun. C'est depuis le 13 juillet euh, 2011 qu'on a mis en place le, la commission de, réconcilia de, de réconciliation au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire. So this was on the 13th of July in 2011 uh, was when the, the, the commission was et c'est le président actuel qui a mis ça en place. Il a mis à la tête de, euh, Charles Bounabani, qui était euh, l'ancien gouverneur de la BCAO et qui était par la suite premier ministre de l'ancien régime. BCAO. BCAO. West Africa. Donc, le processus de réconciliation qui est conduit par le président Charles Kounabani a plusieurs euh, missions. So the process that was led by Mr. 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 D'abord, ça a une mission d'analyser les causes de toutes les crises. So the first was to analyze all of the causes of the crisis. Évaluer les effets. And to evaluate the, the effects. Et rechercher des solutions. And to search for solutions. Pour la cohésion sociale. For social cohesion. Ensuite, on devait faire des, on doit faire au niveau de la CDVR des, des suggestions, des recommandations pour pouvoir faire en sorte qu'il n'y ait pas la répétition des crises. So the CDVR was tasked with coming up with solutions and ideas for solutions that would keep Côte d'Ivoire from having another crisis in the future election period. Au niveau des caractères de, cette, de ce processus de réconciliation, nous avons dit que le processus était, le processus était inclusif. Il était participatif et il était consultatif. So the process of the CDFAR was intended to be inclusive, participative, and consultative. Globalement, ce processus, tous ces, tous ces termes signifient que personne ne doit s'exclure du processus et que tout le monde devra porter sa contribution pour la, la réussite du processus de réconciliation. So that's to say that no one was excluded from this process and that anyone who was interested could come and, and discuss um, how to au niveau de la structure de la CDVR, nous avons donc à la tête un président, nous avons trois vice-présidents et nous avons euh, sept commissaires. Les sept commissaires, les, les trois vice-présidents d'abord, sont choisis euh, en fonction de leur euh, appartenance euh, culturelle parce que le premier vice-président est le roi d'une zone, d'une région. Le deuxième vice-président, c'est l'imam de Cheikh Wakari, qui est
qui, est, euh, qui représente toutes les communautés euh, euh, musulmanes. Et puis le troisième vice-président, c'est un archevêque catholique qui représente tous les, toutes les, régions, les religions euh, chrétiennes. So the structure of the commission, the commission is made up of one president, three vice presidents, and each vice president is tasked with representing the vice presidents, uh, they each represent his own, their own community. So the one is the king of the northern, or the traditional king of the northern region. The second, the northern, the eastern, 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 and then the, the third, oh, the second is an, as an imam who is chosen to represent the Muslim community, and then another Christian bishop who is chosen to represent the Christian community. And then the seven commissaires sont choisis dans les zones au nord, au centre, au sud, à l'est et à l'ouest. There were also seven commissioners who represent their, their zone, their geographic zone. So one from the north, south, east, west. Et il y a un qui représente la diaspora. And one who represents the di diaspora. C'est le roi de Dieu. Et puis il y a un, un autre qui représente euh, les pays, les ressortissants de la CDAO qui ne sont pas de la Côte d'Ivoire. Il faut dire pour la CDAO. Voilà. Donc, et parmi les sept commissaires, normalement, il y a quatre femmes. Ok, so of the seven commissioners, there are four women. Voilà. Donc, il n'y a, a aucune femme vice-présidente, mais il y a des femmes au niveau de. Il y a onze femmes, mais il y a quatre femmes. So there are no women vice presidents, but there are women who are commissioners. Ça, c'est la commission centrale And this is the, qui, qui this prend les décisions. Ok, donc so les the sept sont dans le centre du comité et ils sont en train de décision de la pour le corps. Au niveau de la, de, de la base de la société, il a été créé des commissions locales. Et ces commissions locales sont au nombre de 37 réparties sur toute la Côte d'Ivoire. Et. Au niveau de ces commissions locales, il y a des, des chefs traditionnels. Dans chaque commission locale, il y a un chef traditionnel, un chef religieux, un, une femme, un, 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 un jeune, etc. Au moins dix membres dans chaque. En fait, oui. 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 In fact the, the local commission uh, represents the diversity of the social Donc ça c'est la structure locale. Et au niveau des, des, de, de la commission centrale, nous avons une commission qui est chargée de rechercher les causes profondes des différentes crises. Nous avons une commission qui est chargée de, de, des enquêtes et des auditions. Nous avons une commission qui est chargée des réparations et puis une commission qui est chargée du mémorial. Donc chaque commission, ses attributions sont déterminées par son titre. Le mémorial, c'est pour faire les recommandations, pour voir la nouvelle société ivoirienne. Le, la commission enquête doit aller sur le terrain pour bah, aller sur le terrain. Il y a des gens qui ne pas français dans le cas. Oui, c'est vrai. So, okay. um, so the, uh, the, the, there are two types of um, commissions. There are commissions that are local commissions, and there are 37 of those. And they're made up of uh, one representative from each sort of subculture sub, sub in the community. So religious representatives, women, uh, young youth. And then there are also central commissions for, of the central com committee. And those are each tasked with a specific um, 
job. And so I think we'll go back to Francois at the end, and then I will, I will explain what each does. Oui. Donc la commission, euh, la première commission, la commission périodistique, est chargée de rechercher, de faire, c'est une commission historique en fait, qui va rétablir et rechercher les, 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 toutes les crises, les causes de toutes les crises. So the first commission is a historical commission to look back at all the crises and to determine how they began. La deuxième commission, la commission enquête, l'audition va faire les enquêtes, mais après l'écoute, après les auditions, c'est-à-dire qu'on écoute, on recherche les victimes, celles qui peuvent être victimes, et puis après, on va rechercher dans ce, tout ce qu'on a écouté, les cas qui sont vrais, qui sont avérés, les cas qui ne le sont pas, on les met de côté, et parmi les cas qui sont avérés, on, on recherche quels sont les cas emblématiques. Et ce sont ces cas emblématiques que nous allons envoyer à l'audience publique. So the first committee is charged with listening or listening sessions to, to hear citizens' stories of what of the the effects of the, that the crisis had on them, and then also to to determine which stories are the most compelling and the most um, emblematic of the experience of the crisis, and to bring those for an audience with the central committee, um, and, and then to publicize them. Et puis la commission des parasites. And so the commission of Voilà. Et la commission de réparation va évaluer le préjudice subi. C'est bon Le préjudice subi. Et quand on évalue le préjudice subi, on va relater ça dans un rapport qu'on va apporter au gouvernement. Il va chercher les moyens financiers pour faire réparer le préjudice. So the second commission is for reparation, so this commission tries to, attempts to identify how people have been affected financially from the crisis and then to work with the government to find ways to repay them. La commission mémoriale, c'est elle qui va faire les, les recherches pour savoir la nouvelle société ivoirienne à créer, comme une société mosaïque, où on va faire des suggestions, des réformes institutionnelles pour que euh, les crises ne puissent plus se répéter. So the commission of more the memorial commission is is tasked with is tasked with uh, finding solutions to avoid a recurrence of crisis in the future. Vous avez compris que dans toutes ces commissions, je n'ai pas parlé du genre. Oui. Parce que le genre a été inclus dans la commission heuristique. La première commission. So there is no gender commission. The, the gender is, is included in the task of the historical commission, which I spoke of first. So that's the commission that is um, researching the history of the crisis and, and, and uh, the causes of it. Donc je suis responsable de cette sous-commission genre. So this is a sub-commission of the historical commission, and Madame Francoise is the Et le travail a été difficile parce que les gens, ne, je veux dire que les gens n'étaient pas bien lotis. Puisque c'est dans une sous-commission, il fallait faire comprendre aux gens que le genre est absolument nécessaire au processus de réconciliation. Et j'ai donc fait un plaidoyer pour qu'on puisse maintenir le genre dans cette sous-commission. Uh. J'ai fait un plaidoyer. C'est-à-dire que quand on a créé... C'est ça, je comprends. C'est juste... Non, je voudrais préférer que nous ayons une gender commission. Et non une sub-commission. Et non une sub-commission. Mais elle a même eu de lobby pour qu'elle maintienne la sub-commission. Parce que les gens ne comprenaient pas pourquoi it was important to have a gender Et donc, quand on a intégré la sous-commission Jean, c'est un peu comme si on avait les mains liées. Puisque, nous ne pouvons, puisque le genre est transversal, 
ça doit travailler dans toutes les, les, les commissions et faire des recommandations dans toutes les commissions. Mais il s'est trouvé qu'on avait un peu les mains liées, on était bloqué, consigné, confiné dans une, dans une sous-commission où on ne peut pas bouger tant que la commission ne bouge pas. Or, cette commission-là, euh, cette commission juridique, parle uniquement des causes profondes. Ça ne parle pas de l'impact des crises sur les femmes. De sorte que on était... Donc je disais que le, le, la sous-commission j'en ai un peu traduit ça. In, in fact, the, the subcommission, the gender subcommission was like in a ghetto. Uh, because the, co the, the commission it has to work with is on, only the historical commission. Why gender issues are transversal. So it means that being in that commission, you only can focus or deal with you know, historical aspects. So this is one of the uh, critical points of this subcommission being uh, a subcommission sub in a, an historical commission. So it's like a ghetto. And it only addresses the causes and not the Yes. 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 Okay. Et donc, quand on a, au niveau de cette commission, nous, sous commission Jean, on a fini le travail qui est à faire, c'est-à-dire le travail de recherche documentaire, le travail d'entretien avec les groupes de femmes et tout ça. On a dressé un rapport et on a fait des recommandations. Puis on a remis le rapport aux responsables de la commission, aux responsables de la commission touristique. So the Commission on Gender has finished everything it has been tasked with, which is to research among women uh, their input and their, their experience during the crisis, to create a report and to, to, to give that to the President of the Historical Commission. Mais compte tenu de ce que nous sommes obligés de faire en sorte que sur le terrain, on prenne en compte les femmes, les femmes victimes surtout, on a demander à ce que le ONU femme nous désigne une experte en genre pour pouvoir suivre la commission euh, enquête et audition dans son travail. to support the work of the uh, sub, uh, gender subcommission. In fact, in fact, to follow all the processes. And she had to follow all the, all the processes. And she had to follow all the processes. To be able to see the support of the women, if it's done. And the recommendations are well done. Well done. Well done. And we have to follow the process. Because we, as a subcommission, we can't go to the commission. Okay. So, 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 opportunity she she had to not to tie it up you know this subcommission is to ask the UN women to bring an expert who will have to look at all the process and see and, and make recommendations because she as a subcommittee was not able to do such recommendation because she was tied up in a in a bigger commission. So she and you and women bring that expert for you to follow up all the uh, reconciliation process and make recommendations. On a fait la même chose pour les enfants. For the, for the children also. UNICEF nous a désigné une uh, experte pour pouvoir suivre le processus parce qu'il y a eu beaucoup d'enfants, des enfants soldats, des enfants qui étaient victimes de toutes les crises qui se sont passées. So the, the same process applied to the, to the youth and children with UNICEF support. On a élaboré un guide d'entretien aux femmes et ils ont levé donc euh, des éléments pour euh, enrichir le guide d'entretien général que la commission enquête doit présenter aux gens pour faire ces enquêtes. C'est la sous-commission sous qui avait élaboré ça. Ok, so the sub, the sub, uh, the gender subcommission had um, a defined um, 
Keshonet for women. And uh, the, the general Keshonet has to take some aspect on this specific Keshonet to be able to, to have an uh, interview with this girl. On a fait un guide entretien pour les enfants. The same for the for the girls. Les enfants puissent être pris en compte dans le processus d'enseignement. So that young people can also be taken into account in the process. Donc pour l'heure, les enquêtes sont sont en cours. À la fin des enquêtes, il va avoir donc le rapport. C'est prévu pour quand les, les enquêtes de, de, doivent être euh, achevées même parce que dans la deuxième partie du mois d'août, on doit faire les audiences publiques. On doit commencer les audiences publiques. En fait, on avait terminé le, le mandat à la Cour. On avait terminé le mandat depuis euh, septembre, mais compte tenu de ce qu'on n'avait pas terminé, on n'avait pas encore fait les enquêtes, on a prolongé le, je vais on a, on, on a prolongé le mandat depuis euh, le 3 février dernier pour permettre de parachever toutes les enquêtes et puis dresser les rapports, relever les cas emblématiques pour pouvoir aller aux audiences publiques. Voilà. Le mandat de la commission, parce que la commission était en la CPP était installée pour deux ans, et ces deux ans avaient expiré depuis le mois de septembre dernier. Là, c'est maintenant en chose. C'est fin, fin septembre, là, que officiellement, le mandat doit prendre commission has been extended up to next September. And uh, you could see that the uh, general audience can only start on the 15th of August. So there's still, there is still a lot to do. Je, je vais donc conclure en disant que euh, les recommandations que nous avons présentées jusque là sont déjà dans le circuit. Parce que à la fête du 8 mars, 8 mars dernier, ce sont les mêmes recommandations qui ont été reprises simplement parce que j'ai eu l'opportunité d'être désignée présidente de la commission scientifique. Donc la commission qui devait élaborer les, les, les résolutions. Et donc j'ai saisi cette opportunité pour inclure les résolutions déjà qu'on avait arrêtées. De sorte que ça a été publié, le président de la République est au courant. Donc tout ce que nous attendons, c'est que ces résolutions-là soient traduites en termes de loi. Et nous disons cela parce que nous avons souhaité que, par exemple, qu'il y ait des lois sur la parité, qu'il y ait que euh, l'école de gendarmerie n'était pas jusque-là ouverte aux femmes. On a, voilà. Donc, on a obtenu, on a obtenu que ce soit ouvert. C'est ouvert. L'IMPT également, l'école militaire préparatoire, on a obtenu que ce soit ouvert aux femmes. Voilà. Donc, je vous remercie pour votre attention. Ok. Elle a pris l'opportunité de mettre sur la table les recommandations que la première subcommission a fait sur le Women Day, le 8 mars. Donc, maintenant, c'est devenu une recommandation générale qui est maintenant sur la table du chef d'État. Et dans cette recommandation, par exemple, tous les schools were not open to women. Uh, now they are, since last year, they are open to women now, uh, except the uh, gendarmerie, which is, uh, they are open. Okay, okay, so the gendarmerie is also open to women. Okay. Okay. Merci. Why? Because, as she, she uh, stated, 
in the peace process, in the negotiation process, we have no women. So we decided as women to do something for, for the peace process because we think that it was important for the women to be, you know, part of you know the, the peace process. But in our analysis, we find out that yes, women are everywhere, you know, at the grassroots level. But at the decision-making process or the decision level, they were not there. So we decided really as a coalition, a leader coalition, to push for promotion of women at the decision level. That's why we started you know, negotiating with the state and also with the political parties for them to have a women on the round table that we're going to discuss about you know, uh, uh, the peace process. Um, we, we also take the opportunity to, to encourage, to train, and to coach women for them to be able to, to, let's say, to be candidates at the election. Because you cannot have many women at the decision process, uh, particularly during the election, if they are not candidates. So we really focus on that, and we, we focus on political women. Uh, I would like to, to commend um, NDI's, NDI work uh, um, uh, on the uh, reconciliation process because, uh, as Caroline has said, uh, NDI's is working amazing at the community level. And I think this is more durable, uh, you know, for a, 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 a true reconciliation process. As she mentioned, the uh, Commission uh, for Reconciliation of, of, and Dialogue is a political commission led by a political person. And so you, you understand that there is many things you can really not do because the, the political agenda is sometimes so different from you know, the, the social agenda. So for me, working at the community level with, community, with women community leaders with women parliamentarian and, and women mayor, I think for me is one of the you know the best best way to really uh, start with the truth reconciliation. Uh, so I, I really um, commend uh, uh, the NDI for, for for that. I think it will faster the reconciliation. It's so important because here uh, kids education is. Um, uh, the responsibility of men and women. But in our society, the education is first of all the, the responsibility of women. So if, if you really start the reconciliation process with women, then you can directly impact the community. So uh, it's a, um, for, for me, it's a, it's, a good, it's a good way. Now, talking about uh, the civil society in the reconciliation process, it was very difficult. I mean, it was really difficult. Why? Because many of the civil society organizations were also created by the political parties. So uh, even uh, uh, people coming from, from uh, um, abroad had very no, no visibility, in fact, on, on how to, you know, to deal with the, with the civil society. So it, it really took maybe uh, ten years before we really start having uh, the, the civil society and particularly women um, women organization starting to be strengthened and you know gathered under an, an umbrella organization. But it was it it is it is very important because in these women organization you have all the political parties involved. So if you work with them, then you also touch you know the political party. But first of all, you work on you know individuals that are now able you know to to bring back to bring it back you know to their party or also to their to their community. So it was it was quite difficult at the beginning, I may I may say, and it was very difficult for external organizations like yours to see with which organization should we work when you know when it's. And I may say that also the NDI have made a great effort because uh, through the NDI, um, a women organization, uh, women politicians 
uh, organization was created that you know gathered all the women involved, you know, in politics. I think it was it was also um, a great point. Uh, one point to highlight is, uh, as she says, uh, the audience has to start on August, but, but there is no funding for the auditions. For the auditions. That's why I was saying that it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a political part. There is no funding for the auditions. So a lot of initiatives are taking place you know, at the community level uh, with women. They are really doing a fantastic job. Uh, unknown by the public, but a lot of things you know, is doing is being doing at that level. So I think that uh, uh, strengthening the capacity of these community uh, uh, leaders can really help enhance you know the the, uh, um, the reconciliation process at you know at, at the level. I, I do think that it's so important to work with women. They are doing a fantastic job. Nobody knows, it's, it's not a spread, or, you know, uh, but things are moving at the community level. And if I may make a recommendation, please, look at you know, women at the community level. They can do a lot. They just need some coaching, and they need some training, as, you know, small support, and they will do a lot on the consideration. Thank you. No. <laughs> Vous avez parlé des préjudices subis et euh, des questionnaires et de l'évaluation. Et je voulais savoir quel type de préjudice on parle. On parle de préjudice financier, bien entendu, de préjudice physique aussi qui ont été faits aux femmes et aux enfants. Euh, et comment, comment vous parlez à évaluer quand vous, quand vous vous entretenez avec des gens, des personnes euh, Comment vous pouvez euh, euh, savoir ce qu'ont vécu ces personnes Est-ce que les personnes parlent facilement uh, so in English, um, the, uh, Mrs. Ofumu spoke of the prejudices that people have been through, and I, I'm asking her uh, what type of prejudices we're talking about. Are they financial, also physical, and how they are able to assess them, and if people, when they're being interviewed, if they're able to speak of it uh, easily, and especially for women, I know that sometimes when you speak about uh, rape or uh, other type of violence, it can be hard. Thank you for the question because when someone asks a question that's not in, uh, that it shows that they are interested in the part, in the talk. violence, economic, because que pendant la crise, on a eu des femmes qui ont quitté par exemple le nord pour convoyer des, des camions de, de vide, des femmes des grands marchés, marchés de beau, etc., qui devaient venir vendre leur production au niveau de l'Abidjan. Et toutes ces productions ont pu être euh, on ça, détruites, simplement parce qu'il y avait la guerre. Et donc la <rire> So there, the women have experienced all, all types of violence, including gender-based and economic violence. And as an example of economic violence during the crisis, women who, were, who typically leave their homes in the north to sell products in the south, their caravans were attacked um, and they lost all of their, their products that they were going to sell. On a eu aussi beaucoup de cas de viol, beaucoup de cas de au niveau des déplacements des populations, il y a eu des enfants, des, certaines familles qui ont été transformées en, en enfants soldats, 
il y a d'autres qui ont été utilisés pour être des boucliers humains, etc. etc. Il y a toutes sortes de préjudices. So, so there were many cases of rape, uh, also displacement, and then families who experienced their children being taken as uh, child soldiers. Et le travail de la CDPR consiste aussi à faire la typologie des différents cas de violence subis. So one part of the, the work of the Commission of Dialogue, Truth, and Reconciliation is to create typologies for each type of Rechercher qui a, qui a euh, subi ce préjudice. To research who had, who had been subject to this type of prejudice. Rechercher éventuellement les auteurs. And then, and who had done it, who was the, the perpetrator of the violence. Mais c'est pas pour les livrer à la justice. But not to bring them to justice. Parce que le travail de la CDPR est un peu parallèle au travail de la justice. Because the CDPR works in parallel to the justice system. Nous, on est un tribunal du pardon. So the CDVR works to, to find reconciliation, uh, pardoning, forgiveness. Parce que le tribunal traditionnel, la justice tradition, traditionnelle, continue toujours de fonctionner. Because the traditional justice system is still functioning, so they do not need to replace their work, but rather to complement. Donc pour déterminer les, les victimes, et comment ils ont souffert, il y aura des experts qui vont écouter ces personnes. The so, CDVR employed has uh, experts who will interview the women who have undergone violence. Des psychologues, des sociologues, des médecins, etc. Psychologists, uh, doctors. Uh, Et la réparation pourrait être symbolique. Ça peut être une prise en charge psychologique pour ceux qui ont été, uh, par exemple, traumatisés par un cas de viol ou bien par la destruction de personnes par des tueries qui sont vécues etc. So this is uh, so uh, it's a personal or a sense of, of reconciliation uh, for the person who gets to speak and to tell their story. Donc euh, euh, c'est quand euh, on aura fini tout le travail qu'on va déterminer qui est réellement victime qui mérite réparation et puis le rapport nous disons par exemple la personne qui a un bras coupé la personne qui a eu un parent qui a été tué la personne qui a eu euh, j'allais dire qui a été violée qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire qu'est-ce qu'il faut prévoir pour cette personne -là? so the task of the state of AR is and with this commission to determine who was uh, who was a victim of violence and then what exactly happened to them do they have a broken arm were they raped and then how best to uh, ameliorate the situation or to, to repay them for what, what they have gone through. Et parmi tous ces cas, les cas les plus euh, emblématiques, les cas que, j'allais dire, les cas, les, soit les plus graves, ou bien les cas qui se sont répétés plusieurs fois, on choisira ces cas emblématiques pour les envoyer à l'audience publique. And then the most, um, the most emblematic cases, the worst cases, the ones um, that present represent what happened to many people, they will bring those cases to the public audience. le rapport qui va être transmis maintenant au chef d'État, parce que c'est lui qui a pris une ordonnance pour nommer, pour désigner la, pour mettre en place la CDBR. On lui donne le rapport, et puis maintenant, il détermine quelle structure va procéder aux différentes réparations qu'on aura proposées. So the state of AR has finished this work and has presented their report to the president who will determine how to go forward with reparations. <coughs> Are there other questions? Uh, I have another question as well. Um, merci pour votre présentation. Uh, ma question est pour Madame Myriam uh, qui a parlé de travailler avec les femmes au niveau local. Et euh, ici à NIA, je travaille sur les programmes au Mali et au Burkina. Et euh, pendant notre travail au Mali, euh, on a trouvé que les femmes sont hésitantes de, de euh, parler dans les forums, dans les régions euh, et au niveau communautaire. Et est-ce que c'est un problème aussi en Côte d'Ivoire Et comment est-ce qu'on peut engager 
les femmes euh, dans les forums quand les hommes euh, sont présents. Et en anglais? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, thanks for both of your presentations. My question is for Madame Maryam, who spoke about engaging women at the local level. Um, I work on programs uh, here at MTI um, that focus on Mali and Burkina Faso. And um, during our work at, in Mali, we've noticed that women are hesitant to speak um, in our forums at the, in the regional level and at the local level. Um, and I asked if this was a problem in Cote d'Ivoire and how we can engage women um, at these forums when men are also present and they might be more hesitant to speak because of that. Is there, can we take one or two more questions? Bonjour, merci beaucoup pour votre invitation, merci d'être venu. Uh, ma question, ça concerne uh, la société civile. Uh, je travaille sur l'équipe d'élection ici. Uh, nous avons le, le défi de, de vouloir uh, appuyer la société civile uh, dans une observation non partisane, uh, ce qui est sûrement difficile en Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, et, et la question, uh, tout le monde constate qu'il y a cette perception de, de partisanat dans la société civile, que tout le monde est d'un certain côté, de l'autre côté. Et donc, est-ce que vous voyez l'aspect gens comme une façon de leur billet, de leur donner un peu plus de crédibilité, ou est-ce qu'il y a un autre moyen peut-être de monter un peu le, euh, la vision de professionnalisme, de leur billet mieux euh, pour mieux travailler ensemble Uh, so my question is about uh, civil society, since we're working on trying to support uh, nonpartisan election observation in Cote d'Ivoire, it's a little challenging because everyone sees civil society as somewhat being partisan. Um, so do we see potentially as gender as an, uh, an entry point for a more credible, professional, unified civil society? Or uh, is there another place that we see perhaps that we could help elevate their professional reputation? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so I will start. I will start by your question. RFFC was created after we have, you know, uh, trained all these uh, 400 women, you know, for the election. But we do work with RFFC because uh, some of the uh, members have been trained by us, and we also train them through the NDI because the NDI. The NDI has a training program for them, and we participated. We participated to their trainings, uh, but we do we do work together. Uh, um, for your question, uh, I will be direct. Don't try to make them uh, like you. You will not succeed. If you really want to to listen and to hear women, have separate forum at the beginning. At least the first step is for them to express themselves. Because there is no audience for them to express themselves. So don't, don't try to run too quickly. Let them express themselves where they are. And then you can take a, a, a port parole or some, you know, to, to bring it to the main forum. I think that, that is how you also can respect, you know, uh, the culture and, and, and how they are. And it will come, it will come slowly. For 20 years I've been working with women You know the grassroots level. It will come, but but don't precipitate it. So create forum for them to be able to speak, 
and then in your story you can include them one by one, you know, to, to, to those, you know, big forum. At least the port parole will go there with two, the speak person will go, there, speak women, <laughs> <laughs> will go to, to these forum where, where men are with two or three people, you know, to support them because, because culturally it's very, very difficult for, for women to express themselves when men are there. This is how they have been, they have been educated, they have been raised, so it's very difficult to, to, to change it, you know, in one day. So that, that, that will be my, to, to, to my point, yeah. Okay. Then, then uh, for the election, uh, I think that we have been observing the, the election, uh, uh, two term uh, election. But we have been, we, we made the observation, the observation under an umbrella organization. I think this is where and how you can prevent, you know, for partisan, because you have, um, uh, let's say, uh, many women from, from many organizations coming together. So, um, you know, um, uh, neutrality, neutrality will, will be preserved. So that, that's how we made it in, in two or and I think if, if NDI is going also for the um, uh, observation, it can have an, an, an NDI team with local observer trained because we also um, have an observation uh, guide. Uh, we elaborate an, an observation guide. So this, this will maintain the neutrality. On a deux sociétés, deux types de sociétés civiles. Il y a des organisations de la société civile qui existaient avant et chaque président qui arrive crée sa société civile. De sorte que vous avez des mouvements qui sont euh, déliés. Même, même, vous avez même, même les rebelles, même les, en voilà. soi-temps, ont créé leur société civile. Voilà. <rire> même les rebelles ont créé leur société civile. So in Côte d'Ivoire, uh, there are two types of civil society, So, and basically divided between those who came before the election and those who came after. So after each election, the president will create his own civil society organization, and even the rebel groups have their own civil society organization. So if you want to make a real observation, you have, I would say, Des, des, sociétés, des, des membres de la société civile sur lesquels vous pouvez fonder ce que vous avez, vous voulez faire exactement. Mais vous ne pouvez pas le faire avec ces seules personnes-là. Si vous voulez faire l'observation et que votre observation soit considérée comme crédible, vous êtes obligé d'associer tous les, je veux dire, tout, toutes ces personnes, hein, toutes les organisations de la société civile. Aussi bien les, les organisations de la société civile qui sont, euh, j'allais dire, qui paraissent neutres, qui non partisans, comme ceux qui sont partisans. Ces derniers temps, nous avons eu des, 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 des associations de femmes de tel parti, de femmes de tel parti. Vous voyez, vous allez, vous êtes obligé de prendre des membres un peu partout faire la formation de sorte que tout le monde va sur le terrain au besoin de par deux, c'est-à-dire euh, les associés pour aller observer dans tel bureau. Et c'est dans les regroupements que vous pouvez sortir la vérité. you need a CSO organization created to, to do such 
such work. Uh, so not just the CSOs that are currently uh, organized, but members from each CSO organization, even the, those who are considered to be neutral, but also those who are considered to be partisan, to bring them together to do this work. And then also women from each uh, party has a women's association, and that if we were to take women from each of these organizations and uh, send them to observe elections, this is a way that we could uh, maintain neutrality in the results. Juste pour dire que nous avons décidé, hein, comme Chris est là, j'ai saisi cette opportunité. <rire> on a décidé de mettre en place euh, la case de veille pour des élections apaisées en 2015. Et pour cela, nous avons commencé à, à créer un consortium d'ONG avec euh, des gens de toutes les tendances pour pouvoir créer, pour constituer la base qui va nous permettre de faire les formations et puis lancer ce, ce programme pour euh, 2015. Donc nous demandons l'appui du NDI pour réaliser ce programme. <rire> so, uh, Madame Francois's organization has created a consortium of ONG, of, uh, sorry, NGOs, <laughs> uh, to train, uh, to train observers on elections observation. Uh, and that this is something that they would really like support from any guy to do. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to, to, to make one of one proposal for the elections, you know. All, all the observer are, are uh, we have been participating in mixed groups. While we, we do know that the gender issue is very important in the election. So I'm just thinking why shouldn't we have a group of women observer? so that we could really take into account gender issue in the observation of the election. Because this is not really taken into account. Let's look, um, the, the, um, um, the vote open at uh, eight. At eight, women are at the market because they need to go back. It's not because of the election people are not going to eat. You understand? <laughs> so if you, if you look in the pictures, women are going to vote at two or three, where, where you know the sun is up, there's no, no, no shelter, this is not fair. Right. So something, something needs to be done to, to give them the opportunity also to vote, let's say in peace and in, 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 uh, in decent conditions. You see, in, in Mali, elsewhere, women will go at, at, at two. When they have been finishing you know, the food for the family in the morning, this is not fair. The, the, the other point is sometimes they will go to vote with their husband. You know, the husband, you know, taking all the papers because he really wants them to be, <laughs> to vote, you know. <laughs> you see? So there, there is some specific point like this that we as women can, can you know, uh, take into account uh, being an, an observer. So it will be good to have uh, many women from many organizations uh, in a, in a group of, of women and we'll see we'll see what, what the recommendation will be.